This is a horrible story and children are now left to suffer. We're told at least four kids were inside this home around 2.30 this morning when the victim and suspect ran out of the house. Police then tell us the woman ended up around a corner on that main road and that's when detectives tell us her fiance shot and killed her. Firefighters return in the daylight hours to wash the street, but neighbors say the stain of this murder is permanent. In October 2021, Dina Taylor wrote a sweet love letter to her fiance on her Facebook page. It was just a couple weeks before their wedding, and she was overflowing with compliments about how he was so sweet, kind, gentle, and loving. Her Facebook was all about showering him with love, sharing how she never thought she'd meet someone like him, and how marrying him was a dream she never thought would come true. Listen to a scary story about murder when Dina's sweet and caring fiance, Deontay Sims, cornered her on the street in front of their house, pulled out a gun, shot her point blank, and left her struggling to survive. By the time anyone came to her rescue, it was too late. She was dead. Her life was ended by her evil fiancé. Why did Deontay Sims chase Dina out onto the street? And why did it take so much time for someone to come to Dina's rescue? Let's dig into it. In Dina Taylor's story, we learn about the mom of five who was killed by her fiancé just a few weeks before her wedding. I told my husband, I said, those are gunshots. I said, Stuart, there's a body out there. And my, my, my heart, you know, go, goes up. Um, the, our, our young people, it, it, it's, just, it's just so much. 39-year-old Dina Taylor was a nurse who was enthusiastic about helping others. According to her friends and relatives, she had studied practical nursing at Prism Career Institute and worked as an LPN charge nurse. Dina was characterized as a lovely and compassionate spirit who was always willing to help others. She was the type of girl who, with her bright smile and beautiful attitude, naturally brightened the lives of those around her. Although the relationships Dina had been in previously had not worked out, she was still hopelessly passionate. She had been depleted and taken advantage of by those connections. Dina was a relationship junkie who constantly gave her all and lavished her relationships with affection. But she never seemed to receive the same in return. Rather, she was frequently mistreated, undervalued, and treated horribly, which eventually led her to decide to stay single. As much as Dina would love to be in love, she stated on Facebook on August 5, 2020, that she was not going to settle or lower her standards in order to stay in a relationship. On August 5, 2020, Dina posted, as much as I would love to be in love and to be building with my significant other, I'm single 100% by choice because I desire and require to be respected and treated like a queen. Dina also said, I know what I bring to the table emotionally, physically, and financially. I will not settle or compromise my standards to fit into a box that's too small. Funny thing is, at this very moment, I have a few open offers, but what is for me? I won't have to question, come correct, or don't come at all. But it seems that there was difficulty in paradise soon after they started dating. On Facebook, Dina started posting strange remarks regarding her relationship and mental health. Approximately one month after updating her Facebook status, on December 6th, 2020, she wrote, I feel disconnected, overworked, and sleep deprived. But that wasn't all. She appeared to have posted a breakup message the very next day. Relationships sometimes and because we look for perfection rather than value in a partnership. My learning and growth has been major. She added the hashtag relationship lessons to the post now, while she never confirmed whether she had broken up with her boyfriend or not. But whatever was didn't seem to last because by May of 2021, she made her first post with her boyfriend. She posted a photo of her and him in all white on Facebook. It was the first time she was posting his picture and it looked like it was to celebrate their engagement as she added a date, August 27th, 2022, with an engagement ring emoji. On July 2nd, 2021, Dina again took to Facebook to gush about her upcoming wedding, providing updates on how far she had gone in planning for it. 13 months until my wedding and I don't know where to start, how to start, what to wear, how to look. At least one of the biggest stressors is booking the venue and that is paid in full and locked in. 
so there will be a wedding on August 27, 22. Hopefully I'll have a dress though. Four days later she made another post, this time gushing about her fiancé, Deontay Sims. Dina believed her meeting Deontay was meant to be. She described him as her knight in shining armor and her best friend. Heaven sent me my sweet knight in shining armor, my best friend, my fiancé, and we're getting married next year. He handles me with care, like fine china. Love isn't complicated, and that wasn't all. Dina made many loving posts about Deontay. She called him the most compassionate, caring, committed, and kind man she had ever encountered, and she couldn't wait to marry him. Only in my dreams did I ever think that I'd be getting married in a beautiful mansion to the most kind, gentle, dedicated, and loving man that I would ever meet. When they say dreams come true, please believe them. Dina was ecstatic to be marrying the guy of her dreams and shared her happiness with everyone who viewed her post, sadly. Though, things were not as perfect as she made them seem, because she passed away just six days after publishing her final post honoring her fiancé. Residents of Upper Marlboro's Cecily Court saw a startling altercation between Dina Taylor and her fiancé, Deontay Sims, on September 15, 2021. There was anxiety in the neighborhood because some of the arguments had taken place outside and were loud enough for everyone to hear. The dispute had continued far into the wee hours of the morning. Both of them appeared unwilling to back down, and the exchange was intense. Nevertheless, it's still unknown what sparked their disagreement. On September 16th, at around 2.30 in the morning, Dina bolted onto the street, followed quickly by Deontay. This is a horrible story, and children are now left to suffer. We're told at least four kids were inside this home around 2.30 this morning when the victim and suspect ran out of the house. But regrettably for her, she didn't get very far before Deontay caught up to her, fired at her, and left her dying on the ground. Police then tell us the woman ended up around the corner on that main road, and that's when detectives tell us her fiancé shot and killed her. What appeared to be a beautiful, healthy relationship, Dina's dreams turned into a nightmare in one night because it happened in the middle of the night. The neighborhood was asleep, but a few neighbors were awoken by loud bangs. I told my husband, I said, those are gunshots. I said, Stuart, there's a body out there. And my, my, my heart, you know, go, goes up. Um, the, our, our young people, it, it, it's, just, it's just so much. Dina's children were inside the house the entire time while Dina was arguing with Deontay. The last time they saw their mom was when she ran out of the house with Deontay in pursuit. They then heard loud bangs and Deontay came back inside alone. One of Dina's children called family members who thankfully got there as fast as possible and got the kids out of the house. Deontay then proceeded to barricade himself inside the house. We're told her son called for help. Family members arrived, got all the kids out of the house and to safety before the suspect barricaded himself inside. Once the authorities got there, they quickly tended to Dina, who was still laying on the ground where Deontay had left her. But unfortunately, it was too late. She was not breathing and was pronounced deceased on the scene. We were able to get to her pretty quick uh, with some armored vehicles and the officers on the scene, but it was very apparent immediately that uh, she was deceased. Once they transported Dina to the morgue, they focused their full attention on getting Deontay out of that house in a way that could not cause any damage to him or anyone else. But it was not easy. Deontay was not coming out, and when officers tried to go in, he fired at them twice, according to a press release by the Upper Marlboro Police Department. Once they assessed the situation with Deontay, they deployed the appropriate team to negotiate with him to try to get him to surrender himself. This morning at approximately 2.20 uh, a.m., our officers responded to the 12400 block of Sicily Court for the report of a shooting. Once on scene, our officers located an adult female short distance away from that location in the roadway suffering from gunshot wounds. She has since been pronounced dead on the scene. As officers went to investigate at the original location of incident, uh, they determined that a armed individual was inside of a home. They brought in officers trained in negotiations to speak to Deontay. They also brought in emergency services just in case the situation escalated. Out of an abundance of caution, we declared a barricade. 
our conflict negotiation negotiators and our uh, emergency services team responded to the location. After five hours of negotiations, trying out different tactics to try to get Deontay to turn himself in, he finally came out of his home and surrendered. Through the course of their uh, negotiations, our suspect in this case has successfully surrendered and has been taken into custody. Police say an armed man inside this home on Cecily Court in Upper Marlboro finally surrendered nearly five hours after they say he shot and killed his fiance about a block away. At this point, Dina Taylor was dead. So the case immediately became a homicide and the first thing investigators assigned to the case did was to try to ascertain a timeline of events. What happened on the night of her murder that led to that explosive argument? And was Deontay a volatile person who lost his temper often? Or was this out of the blue? The woman was found in the street. She'd been shot and was declared dead at the scene. After taking Deontay into custody, investigators stayed back to hose the street, clearing it of any signs of the tragic events that took place just a few hours before. But no matter how thoroughly they hosed the street, the neighbors would never forget the sounds they heard or the sight of Dina laying on the ground. Investigators were able to learn a lot more about Dina and Deontay's relationship, but most importantly about Deontay himself. They were curious to know who he was and what led him to take the steps he took. A neighbor who had always lived next door to Deontay had so much to say about him. She had known him since he was a child, since his parents owned the home he lived in. According to the neighbor, Deontay had grown up playing with her kids. Doris Benson devastated after learning the suspect grew up with her own children, their families, longtime neighbors. His parents are wonderful people. They, they, they really are. She was shocked that the innocent youngster she had watched grow up would act in such a twisted and evil way. I still love her. I, I hate that it came to that. I don't know why it came to that, um, but they, they're just nice people. Other neighbors didn't know Deontay and Dina so well, but they did confirm that their neighborhood was usually quiet and nothing like that had ever happened before. And it's normally quiet. We don't hear stuff like this. And to her that that happened is kind of saying, for me, it's kind of not terrifying, but it's like really sad. Through their neighbors, officers also discovered a lot about the relationship Dina and Deontay had and how their children fit into that. Police confirmed the suspect and victim were engaged to get married and both had children from previous relationships. Currently, our homicide detectives and our crime scene investigators are on scene working to determine uh, the events leading up to this uh, fatal shooting this morning. What do we know about those events so far that you can say preliminarily about uh, the events that led up to the shooting? Uh, preliminarily, we do believe that this is a domestic-related homicide and it's still early on in the investigation, so that's the most I can say at this time. The officer also answered a few questions from the media during the press briefing. He answered questions about how Dina ended up on the street, saying they were still putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And how did the woman end up on the street? That we're, we're still looking to... Um, figure out exactly what transpired prior to that 911 call coming in this morning. During the press briefing, the officer also said while they knew it was a domestic violence related tragic event, they didn't know if this was a pattern of behavior that could have been reported by Dina or if Deontay just snapped. Uh, have you been here before? Uh, that's still part of the investigation. We will do an address uh, search. Unfortunately, I don't have that information available to me this early on. As far as the, the relationship between the two, what can you say about what the, the man and woman's relationship is? That I can't confirm right now. We want to make sure that we interview um, all involved parties to confirm that, but I can't say it is uh, being investigated as domestic related at this time. They also answered questions about where the call to 911 had been made from. If it had been made from inside the house or away from the house. Did the 911 call come in from the residence where, where this incident happened or from, from somewhere else? Uh, Preliminarily, I do believe it came from the residents. Perhaps from the victim? Uh, I'm not exactly sure who the caller was. Are you releasing his name? At, and I assume he's been arrested and then what for? So typically, uh, right now, he is in custody um, pending the charges. Uh, we do a standard in any homicide investigation. We do try to talk to our, our victims and sus uh, our suspects in this case. What kind of weapons did uh, this suspect have access to in home? That is still under investigation. Um, I'm not exactly sure what was used. I can say that we do know there was some type of firearm um, used this morning though. Though at this point, investigators had a pretty good idea of what transpired. 
They still needed to speak to Deontay to confirm some information before filing charges. Once we talked to the suspect, our detectives would determine the appropriate charges uh, and apply for those with the court commissioner and then we'll release that information later on in the uh, news release. The officer also revealed that emergency services had gotten there as fast as they could, but they were not allowed to get to Dina as Deontay had cut off their access to her. It was possible that had they attended to her the moment they got to the scene, she could have survived the ordeal and lived to tell her story, but unfortunately, that did not happen. And it was enough that it, that first responders weren't able to get to the victim. Yes, ma'am. Um, out of uh, caution, um, with the active fluid scene, it was determined at that time that it wasn't safe to move directly and based on the information we had available to us at that time. It must have been really tough to, not, to know someone that needed you and not be able to get there. Absolutely. It, it, it's, it's, it's hard to, to deal with, but we, we have to take everyone's safety, the community, um, even the suspect in this case, safety into consideration. The officer laid out their course of action when they got to the scene, saying officers led the way to clear the scene before allowing emergency services to go to Dina. So typically in incidents like this, when a shooting comes out, the fire department along with the police department are co-dispatch. Uh, the way it works is the police department will go in first to ensure the scene is safe for our code responders at the fire department. But because it took a long time to get past Dante's barricade, they could not reach in time to save her life. Uh, this morning, unfortunately, uh, it took some time to stabilize the scene to ensure that it was safe for those first responders to come in. Once that was, um, of course, they came in, but unfortunately, our victim was pronounced deceased this morning. Yeah, we're going to exhaust uh, every option. We, we want peaceful resolutions in these type of situations. We don't want to be quick to just jump in to action to, uh, to get the incident resolved. So this morning just demonstrates our ability to, to hold fast and try to resolve a peaceful resolution to bring someone into custody, and that's what our uh, negotiators did this morning. Just this afternoon, we learned the suspect shot and killed his fiance, and it may have happened in front of children inside that home. Police say the two each have children, but none that they share. After the officers cleared off Cecile Court, the real investigation began as investigators spoke to friends, family, co-workers, and neighbors of Deontay and Dina just to establish a timeline of events. Investigators are trying to piece together what happened inside the home that led to the shooting as they gather evidence and interview witnesses. Their main aim was to establish whether or not Deontay Sims was a man who had been putting his fiance through hell in private, or if he really was the Mr. Nice Guy everyone seemed to portray him as. Domestic violence is always an issue and it's always something that we're trying to, you know, provide services for. Uh, you know, with the pandemic, obviously, it's probably compounded. When speaking to the people who knew him, investigators could not make sense of why Deontay did what he did. Everyone who knew him only had good things to say about him. That, coupled with Dina's Facebook post, painted a picture of a perfect gentleman. We are learning more about the man accused of killing his fiance in Upper Marlboro. Deontay Sims is charged with killing 39-year-old Dina Taylor. But the perfect gentleman doesn't chase the woman they claim to love. The woman they were planning to get married to in a few short weeks down the street with a firearm. Everything they learned about Deontay wasn't adding up with his chilling actions on the morning of September 16th, but the only person who could provide clarity in the case was Dina, and she was gone. She was the only one who could tell everyone. If Deontay is Mr. Nice Guy had been an act or if he truly had been a gentleman, while at the police station, Deontay Sims confessed that he had fired at Dina and tried to fire at two other officers. According to investigators, Sims admitted to shooting Taylor and firing at two police officers they were not hit. There was a clean confession and corroboration by Dina's kids who were there. That night, Deontay Sims was charged with the murder of his fiancee, Dina Taylor. Deontay was charged with common law murder, attempted first degree murder, first and second degree assault, use of a firearm in the commission of a crime of violence along with other illegal gun related charges, and two enhancements for committing a crime of violence in the presence of a minor. We, we, we extend our condolences to the family on the victim um, that we lost this morning. The state's attorney released a statement of condolence to Dina's family. My heart goes out to the family and loved ones of Miss Taylor. What happened to this beautiful young woman was very sad and tragic. My job is to seek justice for her and her loved ones. 
and that is exactly what my office will do on their behalf. Deontay pled guilty to all the charges in a bid to avoid a long and messy trial, and in exchange, he received a plea deal. He was sentenced to 55 years in prison, and per his plea agreement, he will spend five years of probation upon release. He will also be required to enroll in a batterer's intervention program and undergo drug and alcohol abuse and mental health evaluations, according to the state attorney. Though he had taken responsibility for his actions, he still had to pay for it. Though Mr. Sims has taken responsibility for his deplorable actions, he will face severe consequences. What happened to this beautiful young woman was a tragedy and her entire family remains devastated. Domestic violence is a major problem in our country, and I want everyone to know that we take these cases seriously and we will do everything within our power to hold abusers accountable. 39-year-old Dina Taylor left behind three daughters and two sons. Her eldest daughter, who lives in Egg Harbor Township, started a GoFundMe page to help pay for her mom's funeral and raise her siblings. Hello, everyone. My name is Yamana Trini. Well, as most of you may know, my mother, Dina Taylor, lost her life due to domestic violence early Thursday morning. She left behind five children as well as a community of family and friends. We are all mourning the loss of the amazing, beautiful, and gentle woman she was. Any donations will be given directly to the children to assist us during this time. Please continue to pray and support us during this challenging time. She also took to Facebook an app that her mother loved and used so much to share a heartfelt message about the loss of Dina Taylor. No words that I say can show anyone how much I love you. You are my heart soul diary number one supporter. My everything. I love you infinitely in this life. And the next, please watch over me and continue to guide me through this. I love you forever. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on this case? Hey everyone, DJ here. And I wanted to dive into the story a little bit more and just give um, my take on it. So Dina Taylor was a 39-year-old woman with five kids. And she was working as a nurse to support those kids. And just like any of us, just trying to live her life and survive in this world. And just like any of us, you know, she wanted someone to share that world with. She wanted a partner, a husband. I think as human beings, we rush into relationships too quickly. And not, not just Dina, just about all of us. And it's not a good thing. So Dina met um, this guy, Deontay, um, probably in August of 2020. And uh, by October of 2021, they, they were already talking about getting engaged and all of that. And um, that's just too quick to, know, to get to know someone. I felt like a lot of us, we get into relationships and we start having um, sexual relations and all of that. Everything happens too quickly. Some people meet each other in under a week and, and, and they're already involved so deep without even getting to know each other. And that's why there's so many broken families around and so many broken relationships and so many aggrieved people and because we don't take our time to, to know each other to see if we're actually a match. And cases like this just breaks my heart every single time. I mean, opening a newspaper, like every day there's a case like this, right? And um, it's difficult because as human beings, you know, we all just want to live a happy life and um, take care of our family and just be safe. We don't expect that the person that claimed to love us would kill us. I tell you, in more times than not, the person that could kill you is usually the person that claimed to love you the most. So, Dina has been expressing her adoration for Deontay on Facebook. And, you know, when I look at Facebook, I've known this a long time ago. I don't believe nothing I see on there. People just go on there and they just, they just lie to make themselves and their, their relationship look good. I don't know what they get out of it, but it's just very weird, weird behavior. For example, people will be on there wishing their, their husband or their boyfriend happy birthday, and I say to myself, are they not living with the person? Why are they writing that on Facebook? Why are they not, if the person is not with them, why don't they just text the person or call them? Why are they writing it on Facebook? It's just weird behavior. They want the world to see and, you know, and then the worst part is that a lot of them are lying and exaggerating about 
how good their relationship is. Because Dina was expressing, she was like, only in my dreams did I ever think I was getting married to this um, beautiful and kind, gentle, dedicated and loving man I would ever meet. I mean, these words are coming from a woman who was killed by this same man about a couple of weeks before they were, they were about to get married. I feel like this relationship was more than likely one-sided. And everybody is saying he was such a good man. And I, I don't Listen, let me tell you something. A man like that who would kill a woman is not a good man and, and was not a good man. You don't just flip a switch and decide, oh, let me just go kill this. You know, that, that doesn't happen. That guy had to have been a bad person from jump. Now, when you meet someone, they can hide their, their true self, right? A lot of times, they, sometimes they do show you their true self, but you choose to believe otherwise. Sometimes, a lot of times, men do tell women, listen, I, I will kill you, and the woman stay in the relationship. I mean, if I was a woman and a man threatened me, I was gone. I was not staying around to find out if this man is going to go through with his threat. But let me tell you a fact of life. Just being born female means you're a potential victim. Think about that for a little bit. Just being born female means that you are a potential victim for the rest of your life, from a baby all the way till you die. And part of the reason is because the mentality of some men, when you get in a relationship with them, they think that they own the woman, you know, like she's cattle or, or something. And where do men get this from? This has been in bred in men for a very long time. If you look at um, churches and stuff like that, they said the man is the head and of the household and follow what your man do, follow your man, lead and, uh, and be submissive to your man. So yeah, it comes deep, deep from the church and from society and all of that. What if that man is broken? What if that man is a rapist? What if that man is a murderer? What if that man has zero morals? Is that somebody you want to be leading you? Is that someone you want to be submissive to? No, absolutely not. I wish we could change the narrative that men are the leaders and men are this and no. That, that's not how things are supposed to go. A man and a woman should be able to have discussion and come to a amicable conclusion of what direction they want to go. The man shouldn't be the one to dictate where she goes and who she goes with and what she does and no, that shouldn't happen. And the irony is that a lot of men who are possessive, um, they also cheat at the same time they trying to possess this woman and, and lock her down and all of that. They're the ones that's cheating. So that mentality of men, you know, I, I'm obviously not like that, okay? I, I'm married and I have discussions with my wife and we come to a conclusion of what we want to do. And um, yeah, I'm not dominating her. I'm not dictating what she does. And, you know, the most I might make, I might make a suggestion um, to how we can do things. And if she has a different opinion, we then we, we discuss that. But um, I don't want to be the type of person where... My, my wife fears me, you know, and um, yeah, I don't think my wife would, would ever fear me because I'm just not that type of person. I would never um, even raise my hands to my wife and um, definitely wouldn't be a weapon, i tell you that one. And I've been in situations where I've been aggrieved by, by a girlfriend and it was pretty bad cheating and all of that, and, I, and, and um, I never thought, hey, let me go kill this girl, no, I never, that never crossed my mind, I just packed up my stuff and I left, that's it, um, and I know this case has nothing to do with cheating, right, but there's a lot of other cases where there's a cheating situation and the man decides the woman should die because of that, yeah, cheating is not a death sentence, because, um, a lot of those men who want to kill these women for cheating, they're also cheating. The point is that women should be able to live without fear of being murdered.
by their partner, by their boyfriend, by their husbands. And the only advice I can give is that if you're a woman and you listen to this podcast, you have to take the time to know the person that you're with. Don't be quick to rush into bed with, with a man. Try to get to know him on a deeper level. Try to get to know his family and how he was brought up. And try to find out if he really respects women. Check his, check his social media. Check all his social medias and check to see the, the, the narratives that he co-signs and see the type of man he really is. And um, that's what you need to do. You need to vet because your life is on the line. Your life is literally on the line because there are a lot of men with this mentality that if they can't have you, then nobody can. And it's very sad that um, women like, like Dina Taylor have to go through this. Dying at such a young age, leaving all their kids. And this guy, Deontay Sims, he had kids of his own. I find there's a lot of ways you can tell if someone is, is married material. He killed Dina, not even thinking about his own future, not thinking about his own kids' future, and obviously not thinking about Dina and not thinking about Dina's kids. How does a man, how does anyone get to the point where they, they can just murder somebody, take their life away? And it's the worst thing you can do to someone. The worst thing you can do to someone is murder them. That's, it doesn't get any worse than that. You erase them from the earth. So let me tell you this. When someone commits murder, it's not a big deal for them to do it again. So that's why when the cops came and he barricaded himself, he was shooting at the cops also. Because he had none to lose. He already shot and killed someone. He knows his life is basically over. So then he's shooting at the cops. He can shoot at anybody. So yeah, this guy, he was never a good guy. Okay, he was pre- maybe, maybe he was pretending to be a good guy, but I'm sure there were some signs that this guy was no, up to no good. The fact that he owned a gun alone tells you. And women, let me, let me say this to you. If you meet a guy or you're in a relationship with a guy and you realize he possessed an illegal weapon, run. Don't stick around. That's not someone you want to be in a relationship with. Anyone... Who can have an illegal weapon is someone who can murder you. Mark my words, okay? Because someone who can go against the law just to have an illegal weapon, that's not somebody you want to be around. That's not someone you want to have your kids around, and that's definitely not someone you want to be getting married to. Look at the signs. Trust your gut. Stay away from thugs and men who are not brought up correctly. And men who, you know, they're just extra jealous for no reason at all. Stay away from those type of guys. Stop giving up your your body to them also as soon as you meet them. Wait, take time to know them. Because your life depends on it. And you don't want to leave this world and leave your kids behind and your family is sad and all of that for some idiot like, like Deontay Sims. I want to say that my heart breaks for, for Dina and all the other women. And I do stories like this because I want to raise awareness. I always wanted to be a police officer because I wanted to protect people. And I, I never got to do that. But this is my way of, of, of giving back in some way. I want to be part of the discussion. I want to be part of changing the the mindset of some people if i can help change one person i'll be very happy but this world we shouldn't have people like deontay sims in it we need to have a million dina taylor's beautiful woman who's working hard to take care of her kid and just a good citizen and people like deontay sims we don't need people like that on the earth now he got 55 years right and that's not enough. I don't think he's I don't think he's gonna survive fifty five years, but that's not enough. That's not enough. If it was, if I had my way, he was gonna be off the earth too. He was gonna be gone. 
he had no justifiable reason to kill this lady and take her life away. So that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more stories like this. And if you want to support the channel, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.